picking up where we left off in the last video, you'll remember this switch was here with another one that actually worked the lights in that room at the far end. So what we've done is I have these modular boxes. This was from another demolition job because you can see it has the extra bracket here that I didn't need, but add another box onto it. So now we just have all four switches together. So now I can just turn this one on and off to use the lights in this room because we decided what we're gonna end up doing is putting a wall across here to make this like a little entrance way to keep the cold air from blowing straight in. So what I'm gonna end up doing is moving this switch, which actually powers the light up here. I'm gonna rewire that into the new wall that's gonna go here. And that's what we're gonna work on today is actually framing this wall and figuring out what windows and doors and how we're gonna do that. Kind of mocking everything up right now, making sure, you know, I got clearances for the door. So I got tape marks on the floor where I have the two by four currently. Just trying to see if I like it before we build a wall. That's the way I have it set up now. You can come in, there's plenty of room for the door to swing open and step off to this side. So I'm just trying to decide if I want it there, if I want to move back further where I want it, because there is enough room to come in and easily close the door back up. And this is what I was talking about. You can see where I have the marks. So that way, once I move the two by four, I do have the masking tape. Uh, there is actual marks I put on the wall. Because later on, what I'll end up doing is each one of the studs, I'll put a piece of tape at the bottom. So when I go to do the drywall, I know exactly where it's at. All right, has been confirmed. This is literally the place where we're gonna have it come across. So that way I can actually tie into a stud on each wall also. Cause it's gonna be freestanding. It's not gonna be connected to the top because of drop ceiling. We're gonna keep that. Uh, but this is where it is gonna be. So now I need to start building some wall. This is why you wanna measure each side also. You can see I have 90 inches from the floor to the metal edge. And then on this side, it's 89 and three quarter from the same measurements. So if I were to do everything nice and square, it's gonna be uneven across. So what we'll do is take the shorter of the two and then the drywall will make up the difference going up toward the top where the trim will be. Be advised too, this is not accounting for the wood on the bottom and the wood on the top. So if you're using two by four, as I am in this case, you wanna make sure to take three inches off of your measurement. Okay, you wanna make sure to mark, if you see these marks, that means that's basically the center. You see the line of the C, it means the center of wherever you're trying to go. Um, you see you're doing a door, it's gonna be right centered on this. I'm going to do a 32 inch door. So I just marked it actually at 32 centered off of that. But what I want to end up doing is I'm going to be lagging this to the concrete underneath. <laughs> Make sure you get all the dust blown out and then literally just tap this down in. One thing you wanna make sure you're doing is this is gonna be the head that's going in. So if I take this all the way down to the top, you can see I have just enough there. So you have enough to pound it in. If you don't have enough and then when it goes in this far, it'll never tighten up right. Another tip also, make sure your head's here. You see I, turned, I twisted that one a little bit so it's not quite the same, but you can see on this one, the nut is actually higher than the thread. So when I pound on this, I'm not pounding on the threads to damage them. All right, they're tightened down, nice and tight. So this board is not gonna move anywhere now. Um, you may be wondering why this is down first, just so I can get it anchored and make sure I can get my stud to align so I don't hit anything on it. This middle part will be cut out flush once I get everything else done. Um, these are the style that I used doesn't mean that's the ones you have to use. And it was just a simple half inch head on the top, tighten it down to as tight, and then she don't move. All right, next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be putting this one together with these two to put, that's gonna be the piece that kind of goes up and across 
and down the side. So I'll be back soon to get that together. All right, if you're curious to see how I did it with one person, this is what I did. I already have this other board anchored on the ground. So I essentially just put this tight up against it and then I can shoot my nail on the top and then put the second one down. That way I can make sure everything's staying square. And you see how that kind of just lines up nicely with the existing stud that's already in the wall. So now all we have to do is get our level up here, make sure everything is nice and level and square and then nail it in. This is the beauty of working on older homes that you didn't do yourself. You can see this way is nice and level. This way is nice and level. But you'll notice I got a gap behind here at the top, but it's nice and tight down at the bottom. Meaning that I didn't check this wall to make sure it was level, but not a big deal. That's easily fixed. I'm just gonna put a couple shims in behind here and then bolt everything right to it. You can see I got a spacer in here and I got it nailed directly to the board up here. I actually went behind it and put a better spacer in than I could from down on this side. So this is now in there tight and won't go anywhere. So I wanna make sure to understand too, when you're doing these, you want it to be as level as you can because if you're gonna be putting a door in, if you have it cocked, your door is gonna to wanna to swing one way instead of just sitting steady. If you open it, it should just stay, not roll one way or the other. Now we need to make sure the rough opening is correct because I need to do at least three, 33 and three quarter from there to where my line is, which is very difficult to do with one hand. So we are just a tad under. So I need to move that out another eighth of an inch. Since this is just, and there we go. And that's where I line up here and then go straight up. I double checked my measurement from this one over and that goes to here. That gives me my distance I need. So now I know I just need to get this to here make sure the board's level and go ahead and nail her in. For those of you wondering if I'm gonna be putting a header in across here, uh, not really, because this is a uh, non-load bearing wall and is not even anything resting on top of it. So to do that would just be overkill for what we need to do. And I'm just not gonna worry about that. I will still be putting a board <clears throat> across just to make sure I have something there for the door frame itself making some progress. I'll show you what this is going to be after I do the other one on this side and do I got another one that's going to be going down here and do the same thing on the other side and I'll show you what this upper part's going to be for. Now you can see most of the rough in framing is already done. Uh, what I'm going to do is in these cavities on each side I have some old windows which are these and I'm going to end up basically framing these in and there's gonna be a fixed window on each side so that way I can still get uh, the light from outside to be able to come in. But right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get this cut off. And to cut this, we're gonna go ahead and use our little tool here and just basically cut flush right up against the wall. All right, one side done. Now on to the next. All cut. Now we're going to go ahead and get a broom and get this cleaned up and we'll show you what it looks like after. All clean. And you can see it's nice and flush edges. So I think we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to set the door in and see how she fits. This was actually given to me, door. So this is already kind of put together. It was already in use somewhere else. They took it out. So now we're using it. So what I ended up doing was taking one screw out of each hinge spot. I put one in the top once I got up here aligned the way I wanted it. And now all you do, get your level and you can see that's pretty much bang on where it needs to be. And we can put the other ones in, but you also have to make sure that you're checking this way. And you can see it's out a little bit, but if I pull in at the bottom, it levels it out. So that was why I would make sure that this stud was actually straight 
and nice and plumb. Because that's the one I'm actually putting the hinges on. All right, that one's in. Now, what we'll do is we'll give this a test and see how we are. You see, that's pretty close. I'm gonna call that pretty good. Now, I was gonna put one more in the bottom and this, the door itself will be done, but the frame is not, because this part still has to get shimmed, because you can see it's pretty wobbly, even up here, because I don't have this side fastened yet. Okay, the door is in. Now I just gotta go through and cut some shims. I can measure and then get this right where it needs to be. I can use my level, put up against here to make sure everything's nice and square. And then literally just follow your seams around the door. And that'll let you know if you have any issues anywhere. But if the seam is nice and uniform all the way around, you're in a good spot. All right, there you have it. I got this in here. I got blocking, I got a couple nails, so that way when I cover it with the paint, it won't be seen. And in here, I actually removed this and actually drove a longer screw in, so that way it's nice and solid all the way through. And you can see, basically what I do is draw a line and what my measurement was there, that's the size that I cut. Same as right here and down there. So you can see where that one's at. All right, and then the big test, how does it close? I would say that's pretty good. My gap is actually uniform nicely all the way around. Now, if this is for an exterior door, I would actually put screws in more down here also to make it stronger, but you can see this is a non-locking doorknob. This is just to keep the weather from blowing in when we open the door. That's the only purpose of this. Eventually this may get replaced with a different door, but since everything's already hung, It'd be easy to get another slab door or an exterior door and replace it with. Just realized one thing I forgot to mention too. This one up here was actually a little crooked. So what I ended up doing was just getting a hatchet. You can see the pieces I shaved off of it. Essentially, I put it on end, marked where I needed to, lined this up with that line and got a hammer and struck that to just kind of shim it down because it's perfect that way. Forgot to put on my flange up here, so actually I can nail the drywall or screw the drywall fast up here. So I didn't have a flange for the drywall. Now I have it all the way around. The only thing I may have to do is take this. I might have to cut that off if it's gonna be too much for the window because I'm trying to maximize as much glass here as I can to let the light through. But it's getting later in the day and this is a good place to end with this one. So the next one, we'll start with the windows.